case, I didn't know that. And even some of the ones that come up with the three favorites that I don't know of any job or any history, later on when they say, someone just told me that so-and-so I was with for two or three days is a case I didn't know they were. I become aware of that information. So <clears throat> we're trying to watch that transition and see as we get out of the traveling phase, out of the way, and keep that clear. We keep our children out of schools during this time because our needs are few traveling children who are incubating to go back into school this back then again, and you've got the whole school impacted yet again in that regard. So we saw all the safeguards are in place. That's why staying the course, the schools are going to continue to be closed at this time here, and there are going to be other things with special daycares and services related to that. But for healthcare workers that are going to need to be essential services, we want to make sure we do that very carefully with proper screening for any potential risk cases in there because we do not want that introduced back in again. So the message is be consistent with what we're doing. We're getting through this tough time right now. Uh, my letter yesterday out talked about the priority things that we need to do essentially. You will notice in the letter uh, the things and activities I said, I didn't put in going out for exercise and walking. <laughs> I would rather that's done if it's an essential part of your need and you do it in a way that's safe, that means not going to public places that we have attended, not going out of prime times, fixing times when you know you can do it, and maintaining your physical separation. And I've <clears throat> seen some people, on the weekend especially, had difficulty, for some reason I don't understand, doing that. It's easy to assess. You go to a place and it's busy, so you don't go. You go away and go somewhere else. And so you can do that, but there are some essential needs you need to follow in that regard. Furthermore, and the fact we talked about the 70s, people over 70, and the need to stay home at this time because if they get it, the consequences, as you see with the increase in mortality rate and morbidity rate of 70 to 80, more with 80 to 90, and more with 90 to 100. As you go up older, it gets more and more higher mortality rate. It's known the data is there. Therefore, you want to take those precautions. But that means we have to support our over 70 population to do that. That means you have to give them assistance, as we said before, in many ways to handle that. And we're trying to look at and assess that. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing I want to talk about is there's been some talk about people who have left to go up to northern areas, to cottages and that. It's like an extended March break, a uh, holiday, whatever in that. And while that may seem to be an opportunistic thing to do, you have to understand that puts um, unprecedented load on those communities if you're dealing with significant numbers. I understand that some people say, I'm supposed to go up and check it for insurance purposes, go up, stay overnight, come back home again. That seems to be reasonable. That's an essential need you may have to do. You have to check with your insurance company so that you're not defaulting. But at the same time, if you stay up there, those smaller communities are seasonal. They have food supplies at their grocery stores and that set up for seasonal activity. They do not have a lot of people, normal in the normal background of the community, to look after. Therefore, when you go up there, you compromise the supply for the local residents. And you have to understand that you're putting a burden on them. Also, you have to understand in this time of era that the health services up there are set up seasonally as well. They have it for the local community. They have not surged up with locums and other people for the usual summer um, doubling, tripling on the population. And that's not set up for that purpose. So by going up there, when you don't have, and you're going up for a extended time, you don't have access to your regular family physician or your specialist if you have complicated health conditions, and you don't have the same intensity of secondary, tertiary, and quaternary care services that you have in the greater Toronto Hamilton area. <clears throat> so by going up there, you may be putting yourself at risk and putting a greater pressure on the local community that they're not ready to deal with, especially in the next four to six weeks over this time period. So I ask you to think seriously about that it may be an interesting thing to do, and I'd say if you're going, just go overnight. Preferably don't go at all, but you may have reasons for the your property or for insurance. I understand that, but don't use that by going up extensive period of times. So those are my main messages for today. Where are we at? How are we doing? My sense is that most are doing a great job, and you're hanging in there doing that. We're getting to this period. I'm sorry, trying to tell you these numbers so you can see and forecast uh, where are the timelines and where we're going. At the same time, those other areas I've talked about we want to put more emphasis on as we seek that they have to ramp up some more public health measures, much like the cabinet did with their order, much like I did with putting up more directives to long-term care and retirement homes to enhance all those aspects there because 
our case in long-term care homes is and continues to be of great concern, not for us only, all across Canada. And we're all struggling with those same issues. How do we really protect that very vulnerable population in such a way that ensures their safety and the staff safety and also the other side of allowing visitation by virtual means to keep connectivity because we want to make it as empathetic as possible, but that means we need everybody to pull together on that. So we've enhanced a lot of the things in those homes that we're doing, working with our partners in the Ministry of Long-Term Care to seek to ensure um, an ongoing heightened uh, protection of our long-term care and retirement home citizens.